there Judy from Witch Peacecraft welcome welcome to today's video I finally get to do one it's stopped raining for a while so it's not so noisy it's still very overcast and humid it's actually stopped raining so I'm trying to do another video again the week that was it's been a monster of a week first off the ranks I got some happy mail a lovely card from Barbara anniversary card isn't it beautiful? On the 26th of March, Thing and I have been married 47 years. Yes, a long time. Um, and she amazes me with her memory. I forget people's dates and everything, sometimes even names. But she never forgets us and it's really lovely. It's a lovely card. So thank you, Barbara. I really appreciate it. So, Monster of a Week. What have I been up to? Well, I've been making monsters. <laughs> yes, first off the rank is a paid for pattern by y.o.h crochet designs yarn over hook, which is our friend Anita who rang them Amagurumi Wars. It is Nini's little monster. I think I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. But that's it there. I bought it a few months back when she released it and I finally got around to making one. It's a really easy to follow pattern like all of Anita's. But if you're a beginner who's been doing no sew and you want to advance, this little monster is perfect for you. There's a bit of sewing but it's really easy to make. I went a little nuts. So my only disappointment with it is the yarn that I used. I wish I'd had better um, better yarn. Anyway, here's my little monster. Ta -da! I went a little nuts with all the bobbles on the back. I think I could have done less on the back and brought them more round to the front. But there you have it. I used, for a change, the um, Spotlight Saver 12 ply. And the yellow is from Lincraft, which I've never really liked because it's very splitty. I've now decided to put the um, rest of the yellow in the scrap bag for a charity shop because it split something terrible. Um, the monster itself, the pattern's beautiful and it works. She's, well, I call her she. She's really cute. And um, But yeah, I, I think I would stick to the um, Spotlight Super Saver or Red Heart Saver. This 12 ply has a bit of a halo. Look, she's even got toes. So easy to make. And if you're a beginner and you want to advance your skills, highly recommend this pattern. Paid for pattern on Ravelry. I'll leave a link in the description below. Nini's little monster. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not very good with names. So then I got a little carried away making other monsters. First off the rank. I'm really disappointed in myself because I've forgotten both of these. These are tutorials. This is a pocket monster. There's a tutorial for this. I'll leave the name and the link in the description below. I'm just having a brain fade day today. I think it's all the rain. It's drained my brain. Anyway, it's a pocket monster. It's all made in one piece except the arms and you attach those. I gave him a little tuft of hair to make him unique. The idea of me, my making the pocket monsters is I want to have like a little tray of, of really reasonably priced little gifts that kids can buy at markets. I got this tip from Ella at No Catchy Name where she had some really little cheap items that kids could spend a couple of bucks on haven't decided on prices yet. It all depends on how many I make. But yeah, I just thought pocket monsters or pocket friends, I'll be calling them because I'll have different ones, were ideal for that. So that was my first one. It's made with some leftover Ferris wheel using up my scraps. I did use artificial eyes though. The next one is the Hug Monster by Crochet Society. I think it's called a, something else, but... I call it the hug monster now she does this little pocket monster in striping and there's constant changing of yarn and I started it at work where I have a few scraps 
but I only had one color scrap so mine is all one color which probably suits me better because all that changing of colors would have driven me insane so here she is my little hug monster with the long arms she's really cute I just I I just gave her a brighter bow when I got home with a bit of orange but yes tie it together this was made with red um spotlight 12 ply I think that's a bit of Hobie XL I'm not sure but and I used artificial eyes I'm not really good at crochet eyes um I didn't mind it on this one because the, the instructions were really clear it's not perfect but it's better than I usually do so this is my little pocket monster this will be um, another pocket friend to go in my tray that I plan to have on my stall they're made from scraps um, the most expensive part is probably buying the eyes but it's just an idea to have a little tray of something that kids that might have a bit of pocket money that really wants something but I don't want everything priced out of what they've got which brings me to Coco's crochet cowl for 2024 she did the fortnight before she did um, water bottle covers now I didn't do them and I have a reason for that um, I had a friend who did an absolute heap when they first became popular for her market store and didn't sell one and she ended up giving them to a charity shop and I still see them hanging in that charity shop unsold which really surprised me because it's the tropics you would think a water bottle shoulder strappy thing would be great but no so I didn't do that one I did forget though that I could have used a wild card and done something else but never mind there's still plenty of time to do to use the wild card so this fortnight was baskets we could make baskets now I'm not great at making baskets it's not something I make but I did have some what we call spaghetti yarn or cotton t-shirt yarn that I really wanted to use up other videos I've watched on market stalls is have bright colors on your stall and I tend to have dull colors so I broke out my orange t-shirt yarn that was left over and I made a tray basket it's my sort of design it's got funny corners to put possibly my little friends in for the market but this will sit on my table and brighten up my stall it's um, a bit misshapen at the moment because I sort of put it I made it um, pretty much the first day last Saturday I think she released the baskets when she picked out drew out the baskets for her cow and um, it got pushed around a bit during cleaning but that's the first basket I've made in a long time and I made it for Coco's crochet cow for 2024 and then I remembered I had this yarn that's quite coarse and stiff now I bought it I can't remember where I bought it from I know I bought it from overseas I bought it in with an order and it is fiber neutral good earth cotton linen blend and when it arrived I was really quite surprised how stiff and hard it was and I had pink and lavender and I did make a hat out of the pink like a sun hat that turned out really well it's made in Turkey it's a four medium 53% cotton 40% 47% linen and that was and it came in like a um, hank and I bought two lavender and two pink this is the leftover lavender because I decided and I'm going to keep it on this so you can see to make a gift basket with it I've just got it sitting on there at the moment because it actually turned out a bit floppier than I thought so I'm going to get some um, fabric stiffener starch and starch it up because my plan is to put like face washes scrubbies make this a little spa basket because um, for the market one of the things we have to do besides the fee is donate an item for the raffle and the last three I think I've donated loveys and I just thought 
because we the actual market is fundraising for strong mums foundation which is mums who have kids with cancer and have other kids to try and look after as well i just thought maybe a spa basket with handmade washcloths and things would look really great and i really like the lavender i do have other purples and aqua things that i can put in it so when i do if i do decide to make this into a gift basket to give away i'll show you the completed product but that's my two baskets for coco's crochet along for 2024 which i am enjoying because she pulls things out and i haven't it'll be like i haven't made one of those in ages and i'm not great at baskets but i thought well i'll give it a go and certainly for my basket for my table i'm really happy with i have no more of this t-shirt spaghetti yarn left thank you thank you thank you it is really hard on the hands i never really liked it but i kept orange is my favorite color i think i made a big bath mat with it and used that for a long time it does wear well but this was a bit left over and i've used up my scraps before spending my cash so the other thing is i have a small acquisition that i bought myself I, I got it a while back. Um, Spotlight um, Major Store does a, um, not very often, but a 40% 40, 40 off one major item. And you get a little voucher if you're a VIP member like me. That's annoying me. I have to move it over that side. It's the orange glare. <laughs> anyway, I, just, uh, I rarely remember to use them before they expire. But this one particular day... I remembered and I've always wanted this book and I did buy it as a gift for someone at Christmas I kept thinking oh, I'll get that for myself one day well I did and I got it with 40% off which made it a bargain so it's Edward's Crochet Imaginarium I just love it I, because you do different parts it's not just you can make up your own like different sections and this is the one I really wanted. And I think it was $25 full price and I got 40% off. So it was a bargain for me. And I do not have many Amigurumi books. I think I have this and one other. I have a few patterns, but not many books. So pretty much that was my monster of a week. Making monsters. I do like Anita's patterns a lot. It got me thinking about going back and making another one of hers that I've made before because I really love them. I just think she's just brilliant at coming up with ideas. So Anita, if you watch this, how about an axolotl for somebody? You can name an axolotl after someone. <laughs> I've just got this thing at the moment about axolotls. I used to have one in the tropics when I um, lived in we lived in Queen Street we rented a place over there before we bought down here because we had the house as well up on the tablelands and it, it's really unusual to keep an axle alive in the tropics I had her for two years um, and the way I kept her cool was without using air conditioning a tank at the right temperature is you know the frozen bricks you can put your freeze and put in your lunchbox reuse well on the warmer days I would put two or three of those in her tank before I'd go off to work and kept it at a great temperature and she was really entertaining she passed away when we moved here they don't like being moved around and she didn't like the trip and yes, she passed away about two or three days after we moved here. And I've never got another one. But yes, I've got this thing about axolotls. So there you go, Anita. She's at, I don't know if she still is, but she did break her ankle badly. And, and it's a long time to recover from something like that. So maybe you could get your creative juices going while you're resting your foot, Anita. And think of an axolotl pattern. It's easy to make not too hard because i love your patterns anyway guys if you haven't checked out anita's channel please do she just doesn't do amigurumi um she has some great reviews she does other things 
and um, she certainly could use our support at all times and um, check out her patterns on Ravelry and I will definitely put a link to those mon mini monster patterns those pocket monsters in the description below the hug one was the crochet society and the other one I'm really annoyed at myself I apologize for forgetting whose tutorial I watched but I did enjoy making them okay until next time stay safe stay well and hopefully the sun will be shining here and I hope the sun is shining for you bye for now Thank you.